Hi everyone, it's Amy. So I decided I wanted to shoot a few divination videos. And um, I'm going to start like doing a really quick um, overview on the different forms that I've used and what I've kind of learned on it. If any of you guys are interested in something more in-depth or a particular part of it more in-depth, let me know and I'll try and get one of those um, up and posted. Right now I have the wonderful magical unicorn of my littlest is asleep, the oldest one's watching movies, and I'm actually home from work during daylight hours. <laughs> so, the first thing I wanted to talk about actually is the pendulum. And I find that um, a lot of people seem to think that you have to have, you know, these pre-bought ones. And I have one here. I got it. And I don't know if you guys can even see it, but that's a cat. Right there. And it's on a chain. And it's a rose quartz pointed crystal. And it even has a little locking one that I can take the thing off and put it back on. And people think you have to buy this. Or something that says pendulum to use a pendulum. Now this is actually my newest, newest pendulum. And, well, I mean, even new, this thing is like at least 10 years old. So, the pendulum I first started out with, I actually don't have one of the components anymore but what I start out with is just a basic chain just a regular necklace chain and you know these are like the cheapo ones that you probably can get at Claire's or something I grabbed one from my stash and then right now I have my wedding ring and at the time I would wear it one my other rings you know and I would take it doesn't matter if there's a gemstone on it or if it's smooth you can wear whichever one that you really really like and um, with pendulums one of the very important things is to wear it for a little bit before you try to do a reading so you charge it with your energy. And by a little bit, I mean like a few days, not, okay, I wore it for an hour, let's try it. You're not going to get really good readings. I'd say anywhere from two to three days minimum to more. You know, the more you wear it, the more your energy is in it, the more accurate, I would say, I, I find it to be. So all I would do with... Um, the chain and that's oh the other important thing is whatever you do when you do a pendulum you do not want to use a twisted string so you do not want to use yarn you do not want to use um, thread I mean you can if you want to but I've always been told whatever you do don't use twisted thread because when you use it it tends to add a twisting motion to you know your pendulum and while well, pendulum you need to interpret the movements and why add some you know some static to it? So all I would do is I would take this regular chain, and I would take my ring, and then I would take that small end that clasps in, and I would thread it through. It's probably right through there. There you go. And there is the pendulum. So if you have a ring with gemstones or something, you want to make sure the gemstones are like pointing downwards, and then you can do your reading. And um, yeah, this is the most basic one. This is the one I've worked with. This is the one my sister works with. She used her engagement ring. I think the most she's incredibly accurate with this. Um, my husband uses his high school graduation ring and all that. So, I mean, different people, whatever ring really like, you wear a lot, you can use this. Also, if you happen to have just a necklace pendant that you really like, um, I mean, I'm going to be honest, even a cross, you know, a cross would work. Anything that you wear on your body that you can put on your body, preferably skin contact, but if not in your pocket and constantly wear, will work. And it works amazingly well. So there's that ring version. The second version, and I really like this one as well, if you want to do different types of pendulum reading and you want to do it very specific to it, is to get one of these, I don't know, I call it the goingy thing. I know I've seen this in bead shops and other jewelry finding places. If not, I mean, I would just take like a really thick wooden handle, get some floral wire, and just like wrap it. And what I do with that is there are these little stones. So I have some rose quartz. I think that's a bloodstone or a jasper. I know this is whoop, carnelian. And depending on my purpose, depending on what I want with the different stones, and I only want the little chips, I would take this and I would put it in my pocket and I'd wear it for a few days. And then I just pop it right in. And I use another necklace chain because I like my necklace chains. And I just kind of stuck it on the end there. Or you can do the same method I did with the other one. And there you go. 
And this is really good because you know you can charge one of these for love, for like for example the rose quartz, you know, um, hematite I think is good for fertility questions or fertility issues. So I mean different stones, different meanings, you can switch them out. I really, really like this one. So there's that one. And then last but not least are the pre-purchased ones. I haven't had good luck with these. Um, I just find that I, I mean, I can charge them, but I just don't get the same quality reading as I do with my cheapo, but really personalized ones. So there's that. So these are the pendulums. If you guys want me to do a basic how-to on the pendulum or how I do the pendulum, let me know. And I will get on that. So the next, really, really simple. Everybody can get into it. It's very cheap. Also divination one is, hello, pack of cards. All right, everybody can grab a pack of cards. Everybody has them. You know, sorry, these are a bit oil stained when I anointed them. So just your basic cards. Oops, sorry, basic cards. So on some of these, especially, you, I don't know if you can see, but I would, I made a dot at the top to indicate where the top portion is. So with these, you can do several readings. This is actually the first divination tool that I ever used. I used a little insert from a women's magazine and they had like, how to read your future, you know, with all these different methods. So um, in order to read the cards, um, there are some online sources. You can Google them. I can look them up maybe and, you know, attach it to a comment. And um, you can start doing divination. Now with cards, especially with cards, this is with tarot, this is with oracles and everything the more you shuffle them the more you touch them the more you breathe into them the better and stronger it is so what I mean breathe into I mean literally hold the deck like this and breathe your breath through they're trying to get it on these cards um, at least that's the way my mother taught me you know with cards breathe into them constantly shuffle them, touch them whatever you do I was told never ever to put your cards in a metal container or like a plastic one that seals completely something about um, just the energy is not good you want it in a cloth or wooden or you know something that it can like breathe into a cardboard even so this one for me I found this book I don't know if I can show you guys fortune telling with playing cards by Jonathan D and I really like this one because it goes See if I can look at the camera. It goes suit by suit with a little thing right there. So definitely playing cards. You can look. There's several websites. The more you shuffle, the more you ask questions, the better. Don't um, start with supercharged questions that you're all flipping out about. Like, oh my God, you know, if am I this? Am I that? Is this happening? The more charged you are, the more, especially as a newbie, and even as you get more advanced, the more emotional volatility there is the more mixed up the reading can get. That's why people go to get readings by others for emotionally charged ones because they are kind of separated out from it. So when you first start, just start doing it for fun. Like, hey, what does the day have ahead of me? What does the week have ahead of me, you know? Or how can I get my husband to put his clothes in the hamper? Something super silly and, and fun. So, but yeah, this is, if you really want to achieve, it's like less than a dollar for the pack of cards and online sources on how to read the suits together. And, you know, you're off and doing divination. So, the next one that you can make your own, and I really, really, really love it, and it depends if it has to call to you. But at some point, um, the runes started to call to me. Now... I went and looked online for prices for runes. And I wasn't about to spend $20 per set minimum. I just didn't have the money. I was a poor, like, high school student or I think at that point maybe even. No, I think I was in college at that point. Either way, I didn't have money. Um, so what I did is I went to Michael's and I got pine rounds. Now, these ones are really cheap. This is what they look like. I know this is 
this is a blank room so there's nothing on there this is all it is there's a little disc of pine wood and they come like 20 or so up to a pack so one or two packs I'd get two just because and I had a wood burning kit which was I think twenty dollars but if you don't even have the money for that just get you know this this little pack and a sharpie I've seen people use sharpies on these and they're really really pretty color coordinate if you want to make it pretty and um, I just use I use and I know it's embarrassing sorry but this is the book of rooms by Ralph Bloom and I know my mom's dog kind of got to it there and it's all messed up but it's mine it's my baby and there you go you know copied off you can go online and look at the rune symbols you can go online and get um what do you call it you can get um, definitions, you can get meanings, combinations, but I have this book and it's the one I refer to a lot outside of that book. I also got the practical guide to the runes, their uses in divination and magic by Lisa Peschel, I think. And this one I really like as well. It goes rune by rune and yeah just an fyi the runes there are different um languages if you will that use rune different nordic languages different germanic languages and depending on it the alphabet of the runes is different so when you you might see you know one set of runes and then suddenly somebody has a different amount of runes it's because of the language that it's in and the differences there so i would say pick a book or find a website there's a lot out there on runes and kind of find out what language that is in if it doesn't tell you already and just kind of stick with that but yeah these wooden rounds work if you don't even have the money for just plain wooden rounds there's a lot of recipes online for what's called salt dough and that is like you use a whole bunch like a cup of salt to a cup of flour don't take my word on that you know look it up and then um you know you roll it thin probably cut it into squares would be easier or rectangles and bake them and then paint them you know acrylic paints it works too so you can do that and then the other thing too is these are as you are making them you know even if you're just using this and a sharpie even if you're using salt dough and a sharpie these have your intention in it you put this rune on this piece of wood that before did not have this magical meaning um, so your intent, your focus, and everything is in here. This leads to much, much better reading, in my opinion, in my experience of that. And, you know, I've been reading for a long time. So, I mean, this is my, like, not interpretation, but my, my thing, my experience. There we go. Oh, remembered a word. Um, so, yeah, this is the runes, the pendulum and the playing cards these were all things that a high school student or i think i even started reading card cards like oh my god i must have been in seventh grade when i found that little insert and i kept it and i still have it somewhere it's all torn up um so i mean these are what i started out with before i could afford you know tarot before all that so don't let the cost keep you back don't think oh I can't start doing divination until I get all these things because the truth of the matter is the more you practice the better you get the more you do this the better you get um, also the more you do this when you have questions that you really want answered that are emotionally intense you've had enough practice centering yourself doing a reading you know interpreting the results that you can it's much easier to kind of you know take a deep breath ask the question kind of as calmly and detached as you can and then read from that versus you know just starting going okay I'm just gonna keep it for the oh my god moments um, I'm a big fan of you know just try it out just do it. Don't don't spend so much money. I mean, if you like the the twenty, thirty, forty dollar rune set, get it, get it if you can. Have fun. But if you don't have the money, if you don't have the the resources necessarily, don't do it. Remember that witchcraft is something our ancestors did. 
our ancestors, I mean, from the dawn of civilization, you know, we, people practiced magic, and people were dirt poor, and they still did magic and divination. So don't let it hold you back that you don't have any money necessarily for any of it. Now, really quickly, I want to touch on um, the tarot. And for that, I'm going to show my deck really briefly. Um, all right, here you go. Put you right here. This is the ancient Egyptian tarot deck. Oh, I, I love this deck. This is the one. This is the one. I haven't gotten another one that actually spoke to me until actually very recently. So we're talking like, oh man, 13 years I've been with this deck. I love this deck. I read this deck. It just speaks to me. Anyways, um, this is a tarot deck. I went into an actual occult shop to touch them. Now, this is the one thing. This is the one divination tool that I think is very, very important. You need to see in person, in hand. If you can't, there's something called eclectictarot.com. And that one has several different car, tarot cards, and it gives you examples from each. That's the next best thing. Because what you want to do is find a deck where you're looking at the images. Ooh. Where you're looking at the images, and they speak to you. They need to speak to you. Like, you need to be able, even if you don't know tarot, like, there, there needs to be a call, like, going, I like this one. I'm drawn to the images. I can kind of, if I had to guesstimate, know what this means, you know. I mean, here's here's one, you know, this, I mean, you can kind of look and go, okay, I can have this feeling about what this could be, you know, this, that's what you want to look for. Um, I'm going to leave that there. And if you're getting, just getting started, I, I recommend this book. I've recommended it so many times. Tarot Made Easy by Nancy Guerin. Well, every, everybody, I mean, if you're really starting out and unless you're very intuitive, but if you want something to back you up, this book is awesome. It goes through not just, it doesn't just go through, here, let me get a, here we go. So you see the Empress, right? And it goes through the Empress in a reading, focus, design. It breaks it down. So depending on if your question is about home, you go to the home. If your question is about your work, you go to work and career. If your thing question is about physicalness like physical body there you go i mean this is broken down and in the beginning when i was first learning tarot it was very very easy to get mixed up i wasn't sure i doubted myself a lot so i took that book and i had it as a backup so um yeah this is my overview that kind of turned on kind of long about all the divination methods i use i'd be more than happy to go into depth on any of these for you guys just let me know and I'll try to get that up. Hopefully the magical unicorn of everything being nice and quiet and bright light outside and everything will happen. I can do that for you guys soon. Anyways, merry meet. Merry part and merry meet again, you guys. Blessed be.